Hi, I'm George, and in this video I'll be showing you how you can use Photoshop Elements to do more with the graphics inside of Dingbat fonts. They're a great place to find lots of free graphics and free clip art, and you can then go even further with those by using the Type Warp function, and I'll show you how. Now if you like this video, make sure you click on that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. When you subscribe, hit that bell icon to get notifications of my new videos. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Dingbat fonts are special fonts that have pictures in them instead of letters, and they can be very, very useful. There are a few that come with Windows automatically, I'm sure the same thing applies over on the Macintosh site as well. I'm going to show you just a couple of those. I'll make a new layer up here. When you're using fonts like this real large fonts on a page, it's often good to put in a new layer and then hide your other layers before you put your type down. Otherwise, you might click on that other layers in there. So here we go. I'll just click in here someplace and take a look at the font list down here. You can see all the font names as I scroll through these have lots of different looks. You can think of each one of these things, each one of these letters in here as being a little graphic image in the shape of that letter. Now because of that, you don't have to use letters in there, you can actually use clip art instead. And we have some of those way down towards the bottom down here. There's four of these that come with Windows. One is called Webdings, and they have three Wingding fonts. Let me just go a little bit further here, we can get down to these things. Okay, here we are right down at the bottom. So we have Webdings regular. You can see how it's just pictures inside this typeface instead of regular letters. So that's the S right there. That's the lowercase a. That's the lowercase m. And then we have Wingdings regular, regular 2, and regular 3 in here. I use the Wingdings 3 to get the arrow that I used right back in here. Let me show you where you can find more of these Dingbat fonts. Let me just bring that up here. There we go. Defont.com. And look over here in the main section under Dingbats. They have all of these different categories in here on these Dingbat fonts. So let's look at the top one here, Alien. Bring this up. And here's a bunch of different sets of little clip art graphics. And all of these are done as if they are letters on your keyboard. So you put these into your image by using the type tool. They're just basically fonts that have images instead of letters. So there's loads and loads and loads of these things available. And you can find them on defont.com. Okay. Let's now see how I did this bent arrow look in here. Let's hide both of those. And I'll grab my type tool right here. Now I used Wingdings 3 regular. Now the problem with this is you don't know which letter to use or which code to use to get an arrow. So we need to bring up another program. Let me show you what that is. Here we go. It's called the Character Map. And you can find this if you go to the Start menu and go down to Windows Accessories in the start menu and then inside there you'll find a system tools folder. Go inside that and you'll find the character map. I'm going to change this one here down to that Wingdings 3 right there and it shows you all of the images that are inside of that font file. And the one right down here is what I want. It's just a basic arrow. Now the nice thing about this is I'm just going to delete that and then I'll click up here and then I can all just double click on this. There we go. Double click and it puts it down here where it says characters to copy. Then it's to copy. And we'll go back in here into Photoshop Elements. I'm on the right typeface. Let me change the color here to black. There we are. And then I'll use the Control V keyboard shortcut for paste and it pastes that character in. So that's just coming in as just regular type. You see here it's using the type tool. Now if I grab the corner here, click once and then grab the corner, I can make this any size I want. And so far, that's okay. It's nice. It's just a nice big arrow. But let's take this a lot further now by doing a warp on this. I'll just hide that layer. And let's hide that and make a new layer here above. I always like doing a new layer when I'm adding in new type. Again, it just makes things easier. Click on the Type tool. I'll change this here up to just a standard Arial, this real large, thick Arial. And I have Arial Black in here someplace. There we go, real thick typeface. I'll just type in a capital W. There we go. And then let's click on that and I'll stretch this out to size. But nice and large. So there's just a standard single letter in here. With this we can use the type warp tool. Most people think of this tool as only working for sentences. 
but you can actually use this on individual letters as well. So come down here, right there, that tool there with kind of a bent arrow beneath it. This is the warp text tool. Make sure you're on your layer. And then in here, we can warp the text any way we want using this different warp tool and then adjust that warp. And it gives us a huge range of options for the look of those individual letters. It still is a type layer up there. So it just allows us to apply these warps onto individual letters. And there's all kinds of these things in here. Lots of fun stuff you can do and really get some interesting shapes to your letters. But you can also do this, not just on letters, but also on these dingbats because of course they're just letters. That's how Photoshop Elements thinks of this. It's just a letter arrow. Okay, same thing back to our warp tool right here. Let's give this thing a warp and there we go. There is a warped arrow. Then you can move this around even while this dialog box is open. You can adjust the amount of bin, go different directions in here. And I can adjust the distortion, horizontal or vertical distortion. And you can switch this to different axes as well, horizontal or vertical. Gives you just completely different looks. And it makes that one basic arrow into all kinds of different arrow shapes just by using these different warping techniques to go ahead and then warp that arrow. There we go, just all kinds of fun stuff you can do in here. It takes some experimentation to get just the look that you want, but Again, very, very useful, giving you an unlimited number of basic graphic shapes based on just that one original shape. Let's put this back to one that I used. That was the arc horizontal. And I was pretty large over here on the bend. And kind of something in this range in here, a little more in the front, maybe like that. Once that's in here, go back to your move tool. You can then rotate this thing around. Just click on your graphic. Come down to one of these outside handles in there. You can then rotate that around. You can resize whatever you want. So there's the basic idea in here. Now, of course, since it is still text, I can change the color just by selecting this. Just double click and select it. Change your color down here in the options. I'll change it to a red. And there we go. There's a red arrow. You can also apply styles onto this. Go up here to layer. Come down to layer style, style settings. And in here, I'll do a drop shadow. Let's make this black and bring the size down so it's a sharp edge and then just pull that out and you can then arrange where you want that shadow to sit by adjusting your lighting angle. Looks pretty good right there. Okay, so there you go. That's the basic idea. Let's just do one more of these just as an example. I'll hide that one, make a new layer up here, new text layer. I'll leave the color as red and I'll bring back up that character map and we'll take a look at a different Dingbat font that's included with Windows. There it is. Let's go back to that web dings right here. And in here, there's a very useful one for a lot of uses. It's a heart shape. There it is right there. I'm going to delete this arrow down here, just backspace. I'll then click out here and then double click on that. And that puts it down here in the characters to copy section right here. Click on copy. Then go back into elements, back to our type tool. And let's change the font down to that Webdings font. So I'll come way down down at the W's down here. So there's the web dings regular. Let's change the color to red. And I'll put that right in the middle and then control V for paste. And there's that nice heart shape. Let's go back to our type tool here. We can now warp this any way you want to. I think I'll make it larger first. Click on the corner and then drag those corners out. Make it good size. Looks pretty good. Choose OK. Back to the type tool. Make sure we're on the right layer up here. Notice it still says Y, so that's a capital Y, actually. And click on the Warp tool right here. And let's see what we can do. Here's an arch upper. Again, lots of options in here to change the look of this heart very quickly and easily just by using the Warp tool. Again, it gives you lots and lots of flexibility in the kind of graphic you want. And instead of just that one heart, you have an unlimited number of different heart shapes in here just by using this different warp tool. Here's kind of a flag, kind of funky thing. There's a fish shape, here's a bulge shape. Let's see if we can increase the bulge a bit. There we go. Big fat kind of a heart shape in there. A little more distortion. Let's put a layer style on this one. Go up to layer, come down to layer style, style settings. I'll do the drop shadow again. This time I'm going to keep the edge a little bit soft. I'll put the shadow over here. Bring the opacity up so you can see it. Bring the distance out. 
There's your distance right here. And then the size controls the softness of the edge. I'll just bring the softness up. And there we go. Just kind of a nice heart with a bit of a soft edge on here. And then I'll bring the opacity down to a pleasing level. And there we go. A nice heart shape. So there it is. That's how you can use Dingbat fonts and take them a lot further by using that Type Warp tool right down here. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And take a look at the link in the description for my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It's really the best way to learn how to use this graphics program. Okay, and I'll see you next time.